So, for example, uh, in my graduate class, I uh, the first project uh, is actually, actually, I think the second one, is looking at these kind of uh, differential equations for traffic flows on a highway. So how do you use a differential equation to describe the traffic patterns on a highway, yeah? If you have an on-ramp and an off-ramp, that's like your bar flux, if you will. Um, and then you have like the start of the highway and the end of the highway. And then like maybe you have a drag, if you will, between like different lanes going. Speeds. Okay, that's an interesting model. But if I want to describe my traffic equations in such a way, in the black differential equation, what is my U? What do you think <laughs> I'm solving for? What is my Number of cars? Of yes, the density of cars. Because look at what is conserved. Right? The cars are conserved. Right? The cars are not going to disappear out of nowhere or just appear out of nowhere. So, so this integral, or let's even look at this, the integral of u over a section of the highway is actually the total number of cars on the highway. Right? That means u is the traffic density. How many cars are in the unit section. Right, so when you, you may think of the cars as being discrete, but like in a lot of the differential equations, we are looking macroscopically, and uh, to uh, basically we, we think of even discrete quantities when you have enough of them as continuous. It's the same thing if you think of conservation of charge. I mean, each the, 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 the charge is always a multiple of the electron charge, but like if you look at enough of them, they are pretty much continuous. And the F in that case is what? Yeah. F in my traffic case is what? Where your like examined volume intersects the road, like cars coming into and out of the intersection. Yes, F is the flux density. So if you look at each point, it's actually the number of cars there per unit section, per, per unit length, times the velocity. Exactly right. So, if I'm able to model the velocity of the cars as a function of how dense the cars are packed, which means I can write f as a function of u, right? u is basically how dense the cars are packed. So if the velocity is a function of how dense the cars are packed, then the flux, which is density times velocity, is a function of how densely the cars are packed. Yeah? And then you assume that all, all of the cars one region have the same velocity? Yes, in that simplistic model, I assume all the cars in the region have the same velocity. So it's actually surprising that even such a simple model can model a lot of the dynamics in the highway. For example, you have shock waves appearing in the highway. If you drove on the highway, you've seen cases where it seems to be a traffic jam just propagates backwards, right? All the cars drive there and stops. and uh, if you look macroscopically, it's almost a density wave propagating backwards. That's actually a shock wave, right? <laughs> and you also have choked flow. So if you have an accident happening over there, you can usually see like after the accident, the car flows supersonically. I mean, they go much faster. <laughs> and before the accident, it's a subsonic flow, like all the cars are packed and moving very slowly. Although before and after the accident, the flow rate is the same. The velocity is very different. Right, so so there are there are cases uh, uh, like like that. You can always uh, uh, you you can model a lot of very different physics in terms of differential equations that actually looks and behave in a very similar way.